Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, Kalimelisas. Salvation is a word that we hear. I don't know how often we think about its meaning. To save, or to be saved, is something that we also hear. And I wonder how many of us think about that word itself and that phrase, to save, especially related to our life. We may use the word often about many things. I was saved from experiencing a great tra tragedy. A person saved me from doing harm to myself. The Lord came to save humanity, and we are that humanity. So think about it in terms of your own life, not in terms of the world, although that is why Christ, as we hear in the scripture this morning, willingly endured crucifixion on the cross to take on the sins of the world to save the world. So when we hear the phrase, if anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me, what is the cross that Christ is asking us to take on? Is it the sins of the world? No. It is our own sins. It is our own frailty. It is our own proclivity to fall to temptation. That is the cross that all of us have to bear. St. Paul tells us today in the epistle reading, if our endeavor to be justified in Christ, since we believe in Jesus Christ, and he asks us to live a Christian life, we ourselves were found to be sinners. How often we hear the argument and the criticism of Christians who say that they believe in Jesus Christ and are to live a Christian life, and yet they fall short of that. We fall short of that. We fall short of living a Christian life every day. Does that negate what Christ has done for us? Is then, as St. Paul places it before us, Christ become an agent of sin? St. Paul tells us no. But if I build up again those things which I tore down, if I return to my old pattern of life, if I have accepted Christ and through baptism, that cross was placed upon us, and the priest said to all who were present, if anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And then that cross is placed upon the newly baptized person. And from that moment forward, we live a Christian life until we then fall to temptation, which is going to happen. No one can live in this life and be sinless. So whether one may ask, well then, what is the point? Well, the point is that Christ has given us the ability, Father Nicholas, yesterday in his sermon said that the cross is not just a symbol of victory and not just a symbol of hope and a symbol of light and joy, but it truly has power in our lives personally. That when we fall to sin, 
we should look upon the cross to lift us up. That when we give in to temptation, we should look upon the cross of Christ to strengthen us to fight the temptation. When we find ourselves in disagreement with one another, either family members, relatives, or friends, or even someone that we do not know, let us look upon the cross to find the guidance and the way through any difficulty, any challenge, any personal faltering of a relationship, whether it be between a husband and a wife, a parent and a child, a friend, a relative, a neighbor, or even a stranger. The cross of Christ can lift us, protect us, guide us, and strengthen us in every challenge through every endeavor. And then we have this beautiful phrase that St. Paul also offers at the end of the letter to the Galatians. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, it is by faith that we are saved. Yes, we hear a great deal about works and what we can do in our life. To live a Christian life, we are called to live a Christian life. And it is not in the living of that life necessarily that salvation comes to us. It is in the faith that we have that we continually live according to God's word, according to the love of Jesus Christ grants us that we may grant others. It is in faith, which is a gift, that we receive salvation. At the end of the gospel passage, the Lord says to those standing with him, his apostles and disciples, truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God come with power. And indeed, that was true. Many of the disciples did not taste death. Only one tasted death before the kingdom of God was made manifest to them. It was Judas Iscariot who hanged himself. Christ was crucified and died on the cross and was buried. This is what we remembered yesterday and what we remember every time we look upon the cross, not just a symbol of victory, but was at that point in time a symbol of death. Crucifixion was the ultimate suffering in death. The disciples witnessed the kingdom of God coming with real power through his resurrection. The disciples witnessed the truth of all he taught when he stood before them and presented himself a little different, but still Jesus Christ after the resurrection. When he waited on the shores of the Sea of Galilee, and waited for them to bring the fish that they had just caught and to join him in breakfast. This is the Christ that was crucified and risen. And they saw the great power of Jesus truly manifested, a man who died, buried three days, and after three days rose of his own power to life again. So when we think about the cross, it is not just a piece of wood, especially that which we have here at the Church of the Holy Cross, a relic of the Holy Cross. It is not just a symbol of death and destruction and pain and agony. But more often it is a symbol of hope, a symbol of joy, a symbol of new life, a symbol that can lead us through every challenge in every dark moment to the light of Christ, that we may continue 
not only to live in faith according to his word, but to also present ourselves in every situation to others that come into our life, that we become that light, that we become the image of Christ, resurrected, renewed, that we become for everyone who comes to us the image of hope and of joy. May God bless us as we begin this new ecclesiastical year. I also welcome those of our students who have managed to come here early before and during the gospel passage. But we welcome all of our students and all of our families back once again this first Sunday of Sunday instruction. And may the good Lord continue to strengthen and bless us all in this new ecclesiastical year.